Hello and welcome back to another script case by Jamie video. And today, well, we're going to continue with our project. And I have to be honest, during the previous video, I did not really like what I was seeing so much. So I have gone ahead and made a few adjustments. So let's have a look at those and apply those adjustments before we dive into making changes to our project. So the first thing I wanted to go through was really the database. And of course, anybody with a keen eye here will notice that they are using a different type, i.e. a different engine. And well, just for optimization and all the reasons above, we really want to change that. So that first of all, all tables use the same engine type and are also optimized as much as possible and that we maybe we maybe make a few additions. So let's have a look at what I've done because I've already gone ahead and pre-prepared a new database insert script. And this is the original one. So if you have downloaded the project, then this is the MySQL that you will have. And we have our clients table, our companies table, and we notice here we're using the engine in ODB. And if you scroll down, we're using my SM down here. And of course, that's really, well, it's not really very good. So it is important to note the difference between my SM and the in ODB. And my SM does not support transactions that are really more prone to corruption, let's say. So converting them all to in ODB, well, it can provide us a better data integrity as well as performance. So for that reason, we have gone ahead and applied that change. So let's have a look at the new insert. So we have here, first of all, we're going to drop our original tables, first of all and then we are recreating each of the tables. Now, all of the inserts bar one are the same, so they're just pretty much copy and pasted in here, and then I've just made adjustments to the tables. Now, we can still make further adjustments to some of these. And that is really where we have, for instance here, the length. So, as an example, we have here the client zip. And we have here defined 45 characters. Yet, is a zip or postcode ever 45 characters? I don't think it is. I think we can actually reduce that down to 20 characters. We also have here the country. And the country, if we check here on our insert, we are actually using two characters. So, say we are only applying the abbreviation of each country. So for the client country, we could go ahead and change that to just two varchar or even change that from a varchar to just a char field. If I scroll down some more, we have then here also our companies. And again, we could adjust here the zip again to 20 characters, the country here also to two. And again, changing from varchar to char, we could do the VAT number. I don't think we need 50 characters. So I think the limit there really is around 30 but just be on the safe side, let's just change that to 40. Continuing on down, we have the rest of our tables. Now, there is one slight difference here, and that is here that I have also applied indexes to our companies and clients table, okay? So that way, basically, we can streamline and basically have a faster retrieval of that data. Okay, so scrolling down, everything else is pretty much the same. Otherwise, of course, changing the engine each time and making some slight adjustments. Now for here, the settings table, the email settings, you may remember that we had actually mentioned there that maybe it would be a good idea to include those settings in the database. So that is something I have already added here. So the settings now not only has here the email from field, but it now also includes the SMTP server, the username, the password, the port, as well as the connection. Okay, so all of those fields can then also be included within the database, and then we can just retrieve them as and when we need to. We have then also the templates down here, as well as then the types. So let's just go ahead and copy that. 
And then what we can do then is straight away come here into SQL within PHP My Admin. I can just paste that in there. I will uncheck here, enable foreign key checks, okay? Because otherwise it will fail in between because there are some relationships, i.e. foreign keys. Okay, so let's just click here the go button and that will then, as you see, update all of my tables as well as then insert all of the data. So the first thing it did, is, of course, is drop all of the tables and then add the new ones and then insert the new information. And as we see here for the email settings, we now have the email settings displayed within our database. Okay, so hopefully that now looks a little better, of course, and is, of course, optimized as we continue. Now, as we continue on, we will add a few more tables in here later on. And, of course, we want to make sure that we are also using the InnoDB engine, okay, so that they all maintain the same engine type. And here we are using the ISAM for the default storage engine, okay? So that's not really the same, the default storage engine and then the type that we apply. OK, so you don't need to pay attention to this one here. What's important here is that we have all of our tables here as in ODB. OK, so now that is ready, we can actually come back here into our project. And for our project, I was actually going through some of these applications today to see what we would basically apply. And of course, the first form we may want to update is here the form email settings. Okay, and of course, I have to log back in again, the time factor here, and I'll come back to our project again, and of course, come back here to our form email settings. Now, you may get logged out every so often. Of course, I was just modifying the database a little more, and also, well, I, had, I made a coffee as well. So there was a little time span that actually come in between before I started recording and then jumping on the platform. Okay, so now I have here my form email settings, and if I go ahead and run that now, we have here the ID that we are requesting, and we have here just the email from. So what I need to now do for this form is first of all, synchronize this form with our database table. So I can come here to application, scroll down a little, and then here, synchronize table. And then here on synchronize table, I can now see the new fields that have been added. And as the legend down here displays, the green is fields that have, or that will be created within your form here, fields that will be updated. So for instance, if I change the email username from a text field to maybe a blob field, then in that case, it would display orange and would also be updated within this form. If the field has been removed from the database table, then it will be displayed in red and will essentially also be removed from here, your fields, i.e. your form. Okay, so let's go ahead and click here the confirm button and that will now add those fields to my form. And I can see that here in the fields. And of course, I can go ahead and run that also. And we can then see that, that we now have those new fields with the relevant data that we have within our backend or within the database, should I say. Okay, so now that's done. We have our form settings. We can pretty much leave that as it is. I would maybe encrypt the password, okay? And maybe even the SMTP server just for the sake of it, but at least the password. So that is something maybe we will look at later. For now, I'm just going to leave it as it is. Okay, so for the rest of our applications, let's just come back here and run our project and check out the current applications that we have. So we have then here our clients. So we do want to change this here from the send email text and actually add an icon in there. And let's click that as well. And that opens up here our template. Now I think that's okay. Maybe we would want to add some more options in there or something or not. And as we see, when we change that, it updates the form beautifully. And of course, we could go ahead and make further adjustments there, add templates, and then send those. Okay, so if I cancel that, let's come back here. Now we could open that in the modal window if we wanted to or any other way. But I think right now, we'll just leave that as it is. Now we also have here the fields where the user or where you store the user email address. And of course, clicking on that will essentially open up your email okay so that will open up your email 
provider that you have installed on your PC. So whether that be Thunderbird as I have or Outlook or any of those, then clicking on the name here or the actual email address will open that. Of course, using the templates here provides us an alternative method of sending. Okay, so the companies, let's have a look here. The companies, we have our logo. Of course, I've re-imported the project again. The image doesn't exist locally, so I would have to add that if I would want to see it. But we saw before that was working nicely. Now we have here the country. I don't know what EE is, so I think actually it's a good idea if we change that so that we see the full country name there and here the company clients. I think it would also be good if we have a link here on the client's name so that we can click that and it will take us to this actual client. Okay, so we have our email log. We will test that later on at some point, our email templates, and of course, our email settings. Okay, so let's come then first of all here to our clients. And here we have our client's grid. Let me just see that. Okay, so here we just wanted to change the email here. So if I open that up, I can then just come here to the action bar. And of course, previously we have something here on the events. We added that here on record. And that is then basically filling in this field, email, client, send email. So what I'm going to do here is instead, I'm going to come here to the action bar, create a new button, and I will leave it as a link button. I'll call it send mail, send underscore, well, let's actually give it a capital M there, send mail like so, because we already have the send underscore somewhere for sure. And let's just go next. So for a standard link button, we only have one option here to insert. We have here our state and the state is used for the Ajax buttons. So if I come here to the action bar and instead choose to create an Ajax button, then I will have multiple states available, which of course we don't need them. We don't want those now. We really just want to add a very basic link in here. So let me add that again, send mail. And for the Ajax button, you would have an extra box here and you can add more three, four, five, six states if you wanted to. So you can imagine what kind of information that can actually show you. For instance, progress. It can show you the various stages at which you are at just by checking and displaying maybe a different icon, a different color, whatever that may be. Okay, so I have here the font awesome icons available. So I'm going to choose here an email icon. And if I come here, the email envelope. And I think I will go for a black. In fact, let's just go for a nice orange over here. Let's go for the orange. Okay, and that will be our text color. And we have our hover color. And we have our hover color here. So if I make that a little lighter, to our default color, our hover color, sorry, and then our active color. So when we've clicked on it, and of course the active, well, it wouldn't really change at all because of course you would not see that when you are viewing the form. So we have here our text. I don't think I need a text, but I will add a hint in here, email client. Okay, so I'll save the button and configure the link. And for the link, we have here our control client email, next. And if you remember the fields, we had here the fields to apply, the client email. And for this one here, we have a fixed value or a, an extra field. So let's see here the fields. We have no fields here to add. Okay, so we cannot really add any in there. So we can actually just come here and go no value. So let's confirm that. And we can open in the same window. Let's save that also. And then let's go ahead and run and see what that looks like. Now, you see here we have now an email icon as well as a send email link. So let's check out the icon and clicking that will then open up the email client. And of course, we can cancel that and come back here to our form. Now, notice it opens up this window for confirmation. And of course, we can check that or change that, should I say. And that window is actually provided to us by the event or well, by the hint that we just added. So let's go ahead and remove that actually from there, save that, 
run it again, and let's see now. Now if I click on it, now we have no more notification, okay? So that's a nice little feature to add if you wanted to maybe confirm, first of all, before continuing on to the stage. In this case, I don't think we need it, and we can now actually remove there the email field and just leave here the icon instead. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove here the detail and the editing and move all of those over to the right hand side. And if I go ahead and run that, first of all, we can see that. So now we have the edit icon as well as then the send email. So we can adjust those around any way we like. So if I actually wanted the email on the left side, I can apply that there and there we have it. And in this case, maybe that is a better way. So that is, of course, entirely up to you. But for now, let's just leave that as it is. I will also go ahead and delete here the email client field and also commit it on record and remove that little scripty there that we added there. And if I go ahead and run that again now, we now only have now here our email icon and that then connects us to our email form. And of course, it's much nicer. We have a nice icon there. It has a nice hover effect. And we can then email the user or customer directly from there. Okay, so let's also make an adjustment here to the country field. Because at the moment, that is only displaying the two characters. And here we then want to apply a lookup method. So I'll choose manual. And here we use the lookup definitions and countries. So I will apply that, save, and then I can go ahead and run that again. And now we have the full country name displayed there instead of just the abbreviation. Okay, so just about any other changes or adjustments you would want to make to that, that is of course all down to you. You can go ahead and do that. Now, if you would like to maybe have a multiple email sending option here, let me know in the comments and maybe we can go ahead and add that at a later stage. Okay, so I think overall we're actually good on the clients now. And of course, like I said, if you like any additions there, just let me know in the comments. And of course, if you, even if you don't like the training or you think, oh my God, here we go, we've gone and changed the database and we haven't even started the project. And this guy is always ranting and raving how important the database is. Well, that is of course the reason why we have updated it today. Okay, so the next applications. Let's have a look here. We have the companies and our company's clients. So here the company clients, that's where we then listed each of the individual clients. And if we run that, we can see that's then requesting the variable for that specific company. And well, let's just enter one in there. And there we see we have our user. Okay, so what we want to do then is add a link here. And again, we'll come here to application links, create a new link, and we want to add a field link. Okay, not an edit link. An edit link would then allow us to edit the data. We don't want to do that. We want to add a link to the field. Okay, so this will add the pen on the side that you have within the grid applications typically. And here we add a link to a defined field. So here I will choose then the client name because that is the only field we have displayed here, the client name. I'll click next. And then here I could choose the form clients, for instance. I can go next again and make sure that the ID clients is presented. Confirm that. And then it's up to us if we open it in a modal. Let's open it in a modal. So we'll open it in a modal window. And I'll leave the height and width because then it will be automatic, which isn't always the nicest. So you may actually want to spend a little time and make sure you get that width and height perfect for your applications. But in this case, well, we're good. We are. So we'll save that. And let's go ahead and run this application. And if I go ahead and enter one in there again now, and if I click on that, okay, so that now opens up our client information. Okay, so let's check that now also here within our grid companies. And if I run now the grid companies, we can then see here on the right hand side, our company clients. And then there we have the name. And as you can see, it is now clickable. So I can click on that now. And in a modal window, it will open up the client form. Lovely, right? 
Okay, that's awesome already. So we're already advancing here. And for this grid, what else do we want to change here? Well, the country also. So let's jump into the grid companies. And here the field, company country. And again, we just apply a manual select or manual lookup, should I say. Choose countries within the definitions. And then we have all of the definitions added. So if I save that, and then run again, we can now see that we have the full country displayed. We still have the email here to click and email this, this company directly, this company email address that you may have stored, as well as then here, the company clients. Okay, so what else do we have left here? Well, I believe I wanted to add some alerts onto our forms, correct? So let's have a look here, the form companies. Here we have this active status, which doesn't tell us nothing. So I can click on this and well, what's it doing? We don't know, do we? Right? So let's come back into script case, open up here the form companies. And what I want to then do is add an Ajax event. So I'll go new event or new Ajax event here. And then I want to select here the active field. So that is the field we were clicking there. So if I come back here to the form, you can see here, that is the active field, okay? And notice that it's a checkbox, all right? It's a checkbox now as some kind of button. Right, so here for the Ajax processing, we need to choose what? On click, because it's a checkbox. So on click, because we click that button, and then on click, the button changes. So that is what we then create the event for. Now, if I create that event, we now need to add, well, what do we want to do? What do we want to do? We could display a message. We have some lovely examples here where we can display a message to the end user. Somebody clicks on it and it will just display a message. Okay. But that's, we don't really want anything that simple. All right. So we have here our active status. And basically, we have multiple ways of managing this. And of course, I'm just going to add a variable here. So my variable will equal, first of all here, my active, if I spell it correctly, my active status, okay? <laughs> like I said, spell it correctly. So var here now equals the active field. So that is the field here. So whenever you want to target a field that you have within your application, you always use here the curly brackets, okay? If you defined a global variable, then you use these brackets, yeah? Then you use those brackets. So they're hard, hard, hard brackets or box brackets or whatever you want to call them. And of course, those things will create global variables. For this, with curly brackets, we basically attach the variable or whatever we want to attach to the form or grid field. Okay, so this will always attach to the field. So I'm now saying my var equals whatever active is. So if I'm here in my form, and now active is one, then my var would equal one. And if I click on that now, then my var would equal zero. Okay, so to help you, of course, <laughs> Members, lucky day, of course, for you guys. And if you haven't really noticed it yet, just check out here the code snippets. Here in the right-hand side, you have your gold mine, especially as a new user. If you are new to Scriptcase, you don't know how to code, you don't want to code, and, well, that's what these are for. So Scriptcase provides you with a load of examples here. As you saw a few moments ago, when I am within my form, within an event, whatever event that may be, I have examples available. Now, depending if that example will work within this event, so now, Ajax event, we also have other events here as well, okay? So right now, it is red, so I cannot set a value on a master application within an Ajax event. But I can call a JavaScript function, and I can display a message. So everything in green is accessible and usable within this event. Everything in red, not. Okay, so macros. We have a ton of macros to use, and we will be using some of those in a few moments, okay? Because that's really what we want to do. We want to display a message, but not a typical message, okay? 
we have here then also a ton of code snippets. Now, these are only included for members of Scriptcase by me. All right, so Scriptcase by Jamie. If you are not a member, then I'm sorry, you will not have all of these snippets. And membership is the only way for you to get them, I'm afraid. And when you then download this project, you have all of these snippets you can use in any project. Okay, so it's not just in this project, you can use them in any project. And as you can see here, we have snippets, HTML snippets, we have PHP snippets, all organized, all nice and clean and ready for you to use. And there's also snippets for some of the SC macros which you may want to use or apply to your applications. So whichever ones they are, you can of course go ahead and use those at any time you want to just by entering into your event and then clicking the box. And as you see, each of these is fully commented. Okay, so you have comments there that will always help you understand what is going on. Okay, so what do we want to do now? Well, I'm going to cheat a little bit because I'm going to use here an example, show and hide a field. And really all I want here is this if statement, this if else, okay? I don't want anything else, okay? I don't need anything else. I don't want to hide fields or anything else. So that is pretty much all I want, what I have here now, all right? So I'll remove here the comments because we're not hiding fields or anything, but we have here our variable. Now, I know I had to find this previously. I'm just going to comment it out and I'm going to add the active status directly in to my if statement. So here, instead of adding here the variable, which I could also do, I could add here the var. Instead, we'll add the active field. So we'll say then when the active field equals one, then we will do x. Else, so if zero, then we'll, we will do y. Okay, so what will we do? Well, let's have a look here in the script case help, shall we? Because the script case help, yes, there is a lot of information here. And yes, some of it can be a little difficult to understand because of the translations and so forth. But in general, you want to check that out. Okay, you want to check it out. And what we want here is some macros. Back in script case, we have a load of macros here available. This is not all of them. Okay, it is not all of them. And notice you always have here the question mark to the right. So I can click that and it will take me directly to this. It will take me directly to the manual. Okay, and then help me and show me whatever I need to see. Okay, because obviously I just click the question mark, say next to here, SC get language. And there we go, it opens up the manual and it takes me then to the macro SC get language. And then within the macro help, you will have all the information you need. Okay, you have the full scope, meaning in which applications does it work? In which events on those applications does it work? You'll typically also have an example. Okay, right. So let's see then back here within our manual because I didn't want the language, I actually wanted something completely different. And we have here a complete long list of all of the macros, okay? So as I was saying, they are not all available within the application, but they're all available here within the documentation. And you can just scroll through these, have a look through these and use any of them that you like. And the one we want to use is here, the SC Ajax message. Okay, and this Ajax message, well, if we click on it, it will allow us to display a toast message to the end user. And we have an example here. This is the default message. Okay, and we have here a toast message. So the default message is pretty ugly and I don't really want to use that. So I want to use here the toast. So I'll copy that and then I'll come back here to my application and paste that into the if and the else. Okay, so here we have then our, well, the title is actually here. This is the minor title. So don't confuse the two. You would think the title would be first, but it's not. Okay, so here we can say updated and um, what was it? Disabled. Disabled maybe or active. Let's change that to active. Okay, so one is active and then two is disabled. And then we could just say on 
and off maybe, okay? And then we have here also some extra information for our toast. So this configures then our pop-up, the toast pop-up that pops up, which you'll see in a few moments, okay? So we can first of all define where we want this toast, right? So if I come back here to our help information, we can see here the various options. So if I scroll up a little bit, we can see we can apply a modal. We have then also the toast information, whether it shows the close or not within the window, whether it redirects and more. So we have quite a few options there. And of course, you can adjust that any way you like. Now, if I scroll up a little more, we have the Ajax Toast support. Okay, so it's above the actual message strings. And we can see here the various positions and the types that we have. Okay, so we have here warning, error, success, info, question, and top start, top end, center start, center end. I will go bottom end. And that's where I then want to place that. So then here I'll change that from center to bottom end and remove there the start because it should just be bottom end. Okay, bottom end, let's double check that, bottom end, bottom end, and for the type, well, for the active, we may want success, and then here for the off or disabled, we may want to apply a warning. So if I go ahead and save that, I can then go ahead and run now the application, and look at that, we have an error already. So let's check back here in our code and see what is going on. We can see here one very simple error that, of course, well, blind as a bat sometimes, we're missing here the open bracket. Okay, so we have here a closing bracket, but we have no opening brackets here. And of course, that can happen sometimes when, of course, you're editing and so forth. So do be aware of those the typical times when you receive error messages is because you have an error. And there we go with the form now. And we can now see, so if I click here now, the active. There it comes up, disabled, and now active. Lovely. So now let's go ahead and apply the same thing to also here our client's form. So if I come here to the form clients, again, I will create an Ajax event, a new Ajax event, and apply that here to the active field. On click, create event, and then I'll just paste that bit of code in there because it's identical. Again, it's just an active field. The status is the same. And then we can just go ahead and run that. And again, let's go ahead. There we go. Active and disable display down here. Beautiful. So at least we now we have these applications up to the next level at least. And of course, well, much more usable than they were before. At least now we can see what the status is when you update it and so forth. And you know, when you click on something and of course company and country details are displayed correctly, as well as some of the links are better improved. So let's go ahead and run the project one last time. And if I come here to clients, now we have here the email option to email that client straight away, which is awesome. Our companies, we can also access it directly from there, the client or company client information. And don't forget, we can also email them from there as well. Yeah, so you can also open the email directly from there and email that user or that client. Our email log, our email template, and of course, our new email settings. Right, so what else would we want to do? Well, of course, we would want to apply our email settings in there, right? I think so, but I do think that will be it for today. So I'm afraid, <laughs> come back next week. And of course, don't forget to leave us a like, leave us a comment if you don't like something or you think, oh my God, we just changed the date. Whatever it is, I really don't care. Just post it in the comments. Let me know how you're feeling, if you're having a good day. If you like the project, what you would like to have added to the project. It's all good. We can discuss it. We can maybe even add it or add it to a future project. Who knows? But for now, ta-da, have an amazing day. And of course, we'll see you in the next video.